When I first started coding, I thought the definition of good code was simple. If there were no red squiggly lines in my editor, I was a genius. Spoiler alert, I wasn't. Over the years, I've learned the hard way that there's a huge difference between code that works and code that's actually good. If I could go back in time and tattoo five programming principles onto my forehead, these are the ones I wish I'd picked. They're universal, no matter what language you write in. And if you actually use them, they'll save you from countless hours of pain. The first principle is that abstractions leak. On the surface, abstractions feel like magic. You use a framework, an ORM, or an API, and it hides all the messy details from you. But here's the catch. Every abstraction eventually shows its cracks. Imagine you're using an ORM to query a database. Life feels good until suddenly your app is slow because your single call has ballooned into 200 hidden queries. That's when the abstraction leaks. The lesson is simple. Tools save time, but you still need to understand what's happening under the hood. Otherwise, when things break, and they will, you're completely stuck. The second principle is Yagi, short for you aren't gonna need it. When you're starting out, it's tempting to over-engineer everything. You think, I'll add this extra layer or design this plugin system because maybe one day I'll need it. 99% of the time, you won't. I once spent a week building a whole modular architecture for a project that ended up being a glorified invoice parser. Nobody ever touched the future-proof system. The best code solves today's problems. Add complexity only when you absolutely need it. The third principle is that readability is more important than cleverness. Yes, it feels satisfying to squash your entire function into one dense one-liner with fancy rejects or bitwise hacks. But here's the reality. Code is read way more than it's written. Six months later, when you, or your poor teammate, open that file, you'll regret trying to look smart instead of being clear. A few extra lines with meaningful variable names and clean structure will always outperform a clever trick that only you understand. Write code like the next person to read has a baseball bat and knows where you live. Fourth, composition beats inheritance. Early on, I thought object-oriented programming was all about making giant family trees. You'd have an animal class, then mammal, then dog, then poodle, then teacup poodle that barks funny. The deeper the tree got, the harder it became to change anything without breaking half the system. Composition flips the script. Instead of chaining classes together, you build smaller pieces, behaviors that can be combined however you need. Think Lego blocks, not a family tree. A dog can just have a bark behavior, a run behavior, maybe a fetch behavior. That flexibility makes your code far easier to adapt and maintain as projects grow. And finally, the fifth principle, code is for humans first, machines second. What? I know this sounds stupid, but hear me out. Machines literally don't care. You could name every variable yo mama and jam your entire app into one file and the computer would run it just fine. But humans, they care a lot. Your teammates, your future self, anyone who has to maintain the thing, they all spend way more time reading code than writing it. Studies even show the ratio can be as high as 10 to one. Good naming, consistent structure, and clarity are not optional polish. They are what makes your code usable in the long run. Think of your code as a letter you're writing to the next developer, not just instructions to the compiler. And if you really want to become better at programming, you need to hone your skills with good projects that show your worth as a developer. Well, that's where CodeCrafters, today's sponsor, comes in. Their platform gives you access to unique projects that will help you stand out from the competition without the clown shoes and nose. Want to build an HTTP or DNS server from scratch? Check. Hell, you can even craft your own version of Git. All while others are still struggling to center that annoying div in their to-do app. You can start some projects free of charge, and if you use my link in the description, you can get yourself a whopping 40% off, so hurry up. Thank you for sitting through yet another tech rant, and if you enjoyed it, leave a like and subscribe to become a fellow codehead.